Hello and welcome to BBC World News. Myanmar's ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi has appeared at a court hearing, the first time her lawyers have seen her since she was detained in last month's coup. Ms Suu Kyi, who hasn't been seen in public since the military takeover, is reported to be in good health. Her supporters have again marched in several towns and cities in defiance of a crackdown. This is what has been happening in the main city of Yangon on Monday. Police used stun grenades and tear gas to disperse hundreds of protesters. It follows the violence on Sunday when police fired on crowds in several places, killing at least 18 people. Myanmar has been in chaos since the military seized power after alleging fraud in November's election. Well, as we said, Aung San Suu Kyi has appeared in court on Monday. Her lawyer has told the BBC that he wasn't even allowed to look at his client, who was on a video link. We cannot have any access to the court to, uh, to look at the screen on the side of the court to look at her face, Dao Zanzi face, because the judge said we are not permitted because we didn't have up to that time the power of attorney from her. That's uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's lawyer there. Well, earlier I spoke to Hannah, a protester from Yangon, who told me what the situation is like on the streets. I've been on the street since uh, the people, uh, this the whole thing starts, and um, I've been I've been on the streets like uh, uh, before the previous days to like to protest and to donate foods. And yesterday I was in Sanjiang, which was um, uh, was targeted yesterday. Yeah, I was at Sanjiang yesterday. You say that you've been uh, on the streets for some time now. Um, just tell us how yes. the mood has shifted and changed in these last few uh, days and, and this past week. Okay. Um, at first, like uh, until like a few weeks ago, uh, people are uh, like protesting, protesting peacefully every day on the roads. And until uh, last week, I, as far as I remember, they started like uh, breaking the crowds with tear gas, uh, sound bombs, and smoke bombs, and everything. Yeah, it has really changed a lot. It has. They have really been violent since uh, then. Yeah, yes. and I can. We're showing uh, our viewers some pictures uh, from yesterday's uh, protests uh, and 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 how there has been more police and, and military presence on the streets. Are you scared to go out? Of course I am. I am. I am only, I, I'm really, um, I'm a girl also. And um, of course, so many people on the street are also like uh, very young. Like some are really, some are, some of them are like 17, 18, even the people who go out to protest with me. Yeah. I am scared, but we still have to fight for the the democracy that we want. Which is the question I was going to get get to. Uh, given it's getting so dangerous, why do you keep going out onto the streets? We, me and my fellow protesters will fight until we get our leaders back and the democracy we want. Um, so we will still go out until we want um, the, because the government right now it's not legitimate for all the Myanmar citizens. This is not acceptable. So we we have to go out on the roads, despite the COVID and everything, for the freedom, yeah, for the you're, democracy. You're an architect. Uh, are there many of your colleagues uh, who who are also protesting? Uh, just tell us about the makeup of those out in the streets. Yes, um, there are uh, architect association, uh, an official association. Um, and they have made an official statement that they will stand with all the people, all the civilians, and all the all the um, people who are doing civil dis disobedience movement right now. Uh, and yesterday, they there was a strike. There was an engineer and architects combined together. Uh, there was a strike. Uh, that was Hannah, one of the protesters I spoke to a little earlier. We also spoke to Tin Tao Sui, a Myanmar analyst and former BBC Burmese service editor. She told me why so many are continuing to defy the military government. They have seen what it was like living under the military rule. Their parents had lived through that period, their grandparents had lived through that period. And they themselves suffer a great deal in like education, for example. They had to catch up after the country opened up in 2010, uh, in fact, effectively in 2015, when the civilian government came into power. 
So they know that if they give in this time, they're going to spend their life like uh, how the, their parents had spent their life under so many restrictions. The military has been warning for some weeks now that they would uh, crack down on demonstrators if they didn't uh, get off the streets. We really are now seeing a, a difference in tactic, far more violent. There, it's likely that they'll be more violent and uh, they, the more violence uh, in the street. The military will, uh, will not back away from it. We have seen it over and over and the military will make sure that uh, the, 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 the public is frightened and would not come out into the street again. But uh, as you heard from the protester just now, they are defiant. They are going to, they're not going to give in easily. So what's going to happen now? So the, 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 the people are waiting for the international, international community to impose more pressure on the military. And international community is uh, taking punitive measures, sanctions. But they want more than that. They want UN Security Council to come in. They want UN Security Council to impose a, a coordinated global arms embargo on Myanmar. They want these UN member states to uh, do this. And UN Security Council can do it. Another thing they would like is to bring the military uh, to the International uh, Criminal Court. And that they have collecting enough evidence and they're hoping that they could uh, convince the U United Nations Security Council to refer Myanmar case to the International Criminal Court.